So storytelling, um, love it. Uh, and I guess just to begin with, um, I really encourage everyone um, to develop a story mind, a storytelling mindset um, in everything that you do in in your working life, um, especially in nonprofit. Um, and if you really think about it, um, even just change change your perception of your job description. Um, and maybe the first thing that you are is actually a storyteller. Um, whether you're in fundraising, um, you're a storyteller, whether you're doing marketing, um, whether you're giving a speech or a presentation, you're storytelling. Um, when you're writing an annual report, um, it's not just numbers, but it's a story um, in your staff meeting. Um, can you share a story? Uh, if you're sending just even a little email to a client, um, how can you make storytelling part of everything that you're doing? Um, and I think that's a really good uh, mindset to have and actually try to foster that in your organisations. How can you create that storytelling culture um, that everyone can take part in that, um, can be on the lookout for stories, can be collecting and sharing stories, um, and also uh, give them the tools to do it. Um, hi, Eli. We've got someone from Vancouver, Canada. Always great to have you here, Eli. Um, and two, when, when you're developing that storytelling mindset, you know, who are your heroes? Who are you trying to hero in whatever you're doing? Who's the villain, whether it's a condition or uh, climate change or something like that? And how can I add a little bit of drama or creativity to what I'm doing? Um, so I've got some quotes for you here. Um, so storytelling is the essential human activity. The harder the situation, the more essential it is. Uh, no one ever made a decision because of a number. They need a story. Maybe on that quote, um, could we chuck, chuck in the chat? Do you agree or disagree with that little quote there? No one ever made a decision because of a number. They need a story. Got agreed from Mel. Thanks, Mel. Agree. Ooh. Well, <laughs> Eli's just chucked in a, a comment about another storytelling workshop, which is awesome. Yeah, I think I think we agree on that that comment. Um, maybe when it comes to buying a house, I'll probably think about the numbers a little bit more. Um, but it's still very true. Okay, elements of storytelling, and this is this might be where I really fly over the content because I want to get to the real juicy stuff. But I guess um, some of this might um, go into a little bit of writing appeals um, to try and attract support and donations. So it might sort of um, go a little bit all over the, the place. But I think when it comes to writing a story, especially that um, I guess you're wanting people to, to take action, probably the first thing that you really want to do is is tap into those self-motivations of your audience. And Dr. Summer Allen says, uh, people are more willing to give when they see generosity as a part of who they are. Um, and when it comes to, to different donor motivations, um, uh, Alan Prince and um, Karen Mahu, uh, Maru File came up with these um, different giving typologies. So there's the human, uh, communitarian, there's the devout, the investor, the socialite, the altruist, the repayer, and the dynast. Um, so uh, most sort of supporters and donors um, will fit into these sorts of typologies. So you're wanting to um, try and tap into those motivations of the person reading the story, uh, you know, whether it's um, someone that's an investor looking for a return on investment or someone that's just, um, you know, just wants to do good in return. Maybe um, they're an alumni of a, of a university and they want to give back or it's part of um, our family tradition. So you can read a little bit more there about the, uh, the faces of philanthropy. It's hard to talk this time of morning, isn't it? Um, also, just think of, you know, how, how can you tap into those um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Um, you know, we've got needs of self-esteem, um, belongingness, 
So what words can you use to bring that out? Um, you know, fulfilling your potential, you know, can we tap into that when we're telling a story? And, and here's just a little example of how some brands um, actually can do that um, and, and meet the different levels of, of Maslow's hierarchy there. And then we come to um, Aristotle, um, who talks about ethos, pathos, and logos. Uh, so these are um, the three different modes of persuasion that Aristotle came up with um, to tap into and to try and cover off when you're presenting or writing a story. Um, and then again, Dr. Summer Allen. So when you're... Um, maybe writing an appeal, can you make um, giving feel good or can you actually make it feel sacrificial? Um, and then also provoke givers to feel a, a sense of awe or elevation. And you can read a little bit there. I, I, I do apologise that I'm speeding through here, but this is sort of the theory stuff that we could get really bogged down in. Um, but I've got some really hot tips and things to share, to, to share with you. So we'll um, get to them shortly. And then to think of the, um, yeah, I know Dr. Ruth, we love theory. <laughs> That's great. Um, so the seven main emotional drivers, maybe when you're writing that appeal, um, it can be guilt or fear or anger, salvation or exclusivity, like I'm only sharing this with a certain group of you, or flattery, we all love to be uh, flattered, or greed. The next goal I, I think um, is really important um, is really tapping into those emotions. And something I like to do is um, maybe when, if I get, you know, a written reply from someone that I'm wanting to highlight in a story is, is just getting out your highlighter and just highlighting those emotive words and where those emotions appear. And even, you know, as you're reading something you receive from someone, what like take note of where it really hits you in the guts and, and um, really elicits that response in you. Um, so with uh, storytelling, you really want to put that that reader in the shoes of your case study or, or the story that you're telling. Uh, Christopher Davenport says, a story is a vehicle in which to transfer emotion from you over to your donors. The next point is um, the goal of the story of telling a story is to really humanize whoever you're highlighting. And I think sometimes when, you know, it might be when we're thinking of maybe a cancer patient or or someone in a in another country, there can be a bit of a, a separation. Um, you know, if it feels like it's it's a different kind of person to you. Um, and you can it might help me if you can agree with me or disagree. Um, in the in the chat, but sometimes you feel a little bit removed from someone that's experiencing something different to you. Um, so when you're telling that story, how can you make um, that person feel relatable to your audience? Um, what kind of questions can you ask to make that seem relatable? Um, what interests do they have? What what makes them? feel like that relatable person and what what um photos or things can you share that can really help humanize that person rather i guess than demonize them that they've got something so far removed from what you might understand does that sound okay does anyone agree or you're, you're welcome to disagree in this chat as well please if you've got any interesting points please throw them in um the next point is to galvanize i guess a really good story um, will be something that, that causes you uh, to, to act um, and really actually shock and, and jolt you. Um, so when, when powerful stories really become powerful is when it releases cortisol and cortisol makes you really focus in on something and then something else happens, um, it releases oxytocin we start to care and have empathy. Um, and yeah, so that galvanizing, you really wanna call people to action at the end of that story. Um, now coming over to, I guess, getting a little bit more um, practical, 
um, Dr. Ruth saying, I feel a cry. Ev oh, I feel I cry at everything these days. That's so good, Ruth. We like people like you that can empathize. Um, so moving on to um, story structure now, I guess the stories that we're used to, um, I guess you can call it the Pixar pitch uh, is once upon a time blank every day blank until one day. This is, I guess, where you reach the climax of the story. And because of this situation, this happens. And because of that, this happens until finally. Um, what's missing there, I think, is that real, that real tension. Like you've got to cause that, you know, shocking, jolting tension. Um, and here's a really great quote, quote from uh, Jennifer Aker. Most people confuse stories with situations. They tell about situation X happened, then Y happened, then Z happened, maybe Z for people in Canada. But a good news story, a good story takes Y, the middle part of the story, and creates tension or conflict where the reader or the audience is drawn into the story. What's going to happen next? I um, mean, even lingering there. Um, there's something called the dramatic arc, which you can look up there. I've got a link there for you um and i even think i think we're about to get into this next point uh, i even think bringing just a little bit of that climax or that tension even at the beginning to create a little bit of curiosity or like what's what's happening um and then just start that story off but too i like to think um when you're telling a story um you know you might think of um when you uh when you're a baby, you had those books where you could touch and crinkle things and, you know, it might be sounds and alliteration and all those things. Even just think how yeah, you can bring those sorts of things into your storytelling. And that's where, you know, video is powerful um, when it comes to sending a, a direct mail piece. That there's something that, you know, if it's like a letter from someone or something that they can touch and hold. Okay, now we get into... Um, to the nitty gritty, some tips and tricks. So when it comes to storytelling, I want you to try and think that, especially online, um, you've actually got to the count of seven to grab someone. And uh, some research by statisticbrain.com says that the, the average person's attention span is about eight seconds when they're online and they only read about a third of uh, the words on a page. So that's where I'm giving you the to the count of seven uh, to grab their attention. What's gonna be about that page, about that video that's gonna draw them in with the, within those seven seconds before they bounce. So my tip there is, you know, can you put the compelling, the most compelling part of the story you're telling, can you put that even just in the beginning um, of, uh, of your story, of your video, um, what's what's that hook going to be and what's going to make um, the viewer want to be curious to continue? And that's where I think you can even just add that little bit of um, tension in the beginning. Um, I might just see if I can share. Just bear with me. Uh, a new system here guys um, hopefully I'll be able to play with this so this is just a new um, video that Movember have um, brought out and straight away it's going to suicide notes dear mum and dad this is your fault I'm sorry, sorry I can't, can't be, be the father, father you want me to be. You'll, You'll find, find another, another best friend. friend. There's, There's no, no one's fault. fault. No, no one caused it. it. Please, Please move, move on. on. That's, That's all, all I, I want. want. I love you. And I'm done. I purposely stopped it there. Does anyone... Um, does anyone want to watch the end of that video? Throw your feelings in the chat if you like. 
<laughs> we've got a yes and we've got a not sure. <laughs> so straight away in just in that little example of a video, it's it's like, what is this video going to be about? Uh, are these people going to survive? And it actually goes on and um, tells you, no, you know, I wrote that letter seven years ago. I'm still around because of X, Y, Z. Um, so it's really powerful. It got you in straight away. Uh, I think, too, just with um, writing a story online and really presenting anything online, I've got a friend, um, Andrew Pitchford, who calls, um, you know, when you see a website and all it is, it's just got miles and miles of text. Um, he calls that Wimbledon text where you just got to read and read and read. As soon as I see that, I just want to leave. Um, so when it comes to making sure you attract someone, uh, attract their attention with them in that second seven seconds don't put large chunks of text you want to reduce the amount of text um, people read headings they read you know quotes that you might pull out um, they might go to dot points can you convert some of um, the, the copy into just some short dot, uh, dot points um, can you add images can you add a little video uh, and these days, even, um, you know, people are putting in um, too long, didn't read sections or executive summaries or a 30 second summaries at the top of a page. So do I want to read this? Oh, yeah, that sounds interesting. And I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, and here's just some examples here. Probably not an appeal, an appeal page. You don't really want to say too long, don't read. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it might be useful in, uh, infam you know, long bits of information, etc. All right, we're going to move into photography now. Are you all going okay? Is this helpful, useful? Feel free to throw any comments or if you've got any tips in the chat too, please. Thanks, Ruth. So photography, something that I love to do, um, and it can look a bit cheesy, like the photography is not going to win any awards, um, but a story... Um, if you're wanting to tell a story with just a photo, it can really add a whole lot more meaning when you um, have someone hold a sign that can tell that story straight away. So here we've got some kids that have uh, finished their cancer treatment and they're going home. Um, so, you know, you see their great smile and those words, it's like, oh, what they're going home? What does that mean? Oh, okay, I'll read on. Um, so it just draws you in. Um, and here's some other examples. Um, this one on the left here, this lovely lady, Carmel, um, she actually, her husband was struggling uh, with back issues and couldn't care for her wife anymore. And I went and interviewed her um, and her husband was doing all these exercises to strengthen his back um, so that Carmel could go and live um with her husband again, and uh, so and it just reignited their relationship again. So I brought her a bunch of flowers. I'm like, oh, I've got to put that little quote on a piece of paper and get her to hold it. And it, yeah, I might might have teared up at that moment, but it's pretty cool. Um, just some tips for taking photos. Taking being a photographer is quite a challenge because um, often people uh, clam up. I think as soon as um, you pull out a camera and often you're not going to get the, the best photos straight up. Those first few photos aren't going to be the best. Um, but what, what you might want to do is actually take a few photos and just say something, maybe not inappropriate, but just say something to make them laugh and that's when you can start taking some real smiles, not the fake ones that they're trying to muster up. Um, and maybe you're trying to get an emotive shot. Um, if you tell someone to look sad or to, they might end up looking angry, but even just asking them to just put a blank uh, look on their face, they might get that more emotive um, look. Does anyone have any tips for taking photos of people? Throw them in the chat if you, if you do. Um, just another tip to... Uh, especially if you're putting together like a social media ad or something that you really want to, again, grab that um, 
person's attention in those those split seconds. Um, if you've got a photo where people are looking direct at the camera, they tend to actually work a whole lot better if they're just even slightly looking away. So it's about um, grabbing that person's attention. Um, oh, lighting, yes, Mel, lighting, well lit. Um, shade is always good as well. Yeah, even just editing your photos, um, you know, you can get free free editing software, etc. Sometimes even just spending that extra 10 seconds editing a photo and bringing it, bringing that person out of darkness will just completely change, um, change that, the emotion or, or, yeah, you'll be able to just see what's happening. Um, Mel says, take in portrait and landscape too for to use in different channels. That's a definitely a good, good point. Something I like to do and I'm trying to do more is actually how can you brand your photography? And it might not always be relevant uh, or useful, but how can you show your brand uh, in each photo that you take? Um, and Charity Water do this exceptionally well uh, with this sort of water can situation that's part of their logo. Uh, and they, they do that in their photos, in their videos. Um, and what really happens there is that actually li links someone in America, a young kid that's fundraising to a person that they're helping around the other side of the world. Um, and it just starts to really tie everything in together. And even just elements of maybe your logo, can you just cut, start to bring that across? And um, the Kids Cancer Project do that really well by bringing in elements of, of their logo into everything that they do. So what I've done here for you is I've put a little photographer brief. I'm going to send this document around um, so you can pick it up and edit it, um, use it in your own situation. But just a little photography brief. Maybe you're doing a media launch or an event um, and you want to equip your photographer. Maybe you've got someone doing social media. Um, so I've just got a little bit of... Uh, just some prompts around different types of photos that you might uh, like to to get. Uh, and like what um, Melanie said, it's, it's useful to um, take different um, formats of photos, whether it's portrait or landscape. With your landscape photos, sometimes it's useful just to get a bit of blank space off to the left or the right, because that's where often you can put quotes or words, etc., and just make that photo a little bit more useful. Um, so that's just a little bit of a, a brief for you there. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, videography, I'm not going to go too deep into this um, because we have got a session coming up uh, in a month or two on videography, which will be really helpful. Um, but Simply Measured uh, says that videos are shared 12 times more often um, than links and um, text posts combined. And photos are shared twice as often as text updates. So if you can, um, you know, create a video, um, it might be a real complex video that you spend thousands of dollars getting a videographer um, to do, or it can just be uh, a video that you pull off yourself. Um, it, it can be, it's more likely to be shared than a link or a text post or a photo post. Um, and just a hot tip for today, um, you don't need to be great at uh, videography. Even just with a handful of photos, um, you can create a video. You can put a backing track to it. You can add a few, you know, add some um, words and that story to it and create a video slideshow. And I've got a few um, a few programs coming up that that will help you to do that. And here I've just put together uh, just a quick little video cheat sheet as well. Um, Especially in COVID times, um, you might be separated from the people that you're trying to interview. You can't race out and um, get a video of them yourself. So you might be asking them to do it on their phone. So I've just got a few tips here um, to help them take uh, the video themselves. Um, and I think, you know, it's useful to tell someone when they're... Um, filming themselves or 
or you're filming a person, you know, don't feel like that they've got to rattle it all off in one go. That's quite daunting. But just tell them you might just want to do a sentence or two at a time and that's where you can put things together and put photos in between or quotes in between. Um, and then I've just got some tips here of how people can send a video. I think um, sending it by WeTransfer is probably the most easiest for people to upload a big file and send it to you. So hopefully that's um, handy for you. All right, here comes some hacking parts of today. Um, what I've done is just put together, um, it's really just the start of a bit of a copywriting cheat sheet for yourself. Um, when it comes to, to copywriting or putting together your next email, um, we're all doing work on the fly. Um, it's useful to have something where you can just go to and, you know, oh, I want to make this seem urgent. Here's a few urgency statements that you might collect or thank you statements, um, call to action, you know, sign up, help, protect, um, will you help us fight, um, et cetera. And then interview questions. Um, I think to do powerful storytelling, it's all about how great your questions are. Um, I'd love to know, I'm going to rattle a few of these off, but I'd love to know in the chat what, what are some of your go-to questions? What's your most favourite question to ask? What's your most powerful question that you ask people a lot? Please throw it in the chat and we'll read them out. But, um, you know, what was life like before your big experience or your big change? Um, what, uh, what were you experiencing at the lowest point in your situation? What were your thoughts and feelings? Oh, I love this coming in thick and fast from Melanie. What's your greatest fear? Um, what's been your greatest struggle? That's great. Um, you know, can you can you um, tell us a specific moment where you felt uplifted by something that happened by being involved in your organisation? Um, one that I enjoy, like to, to ask too is what surprised you most about um, the organisation? Um, oh, Ruth, Dr. Ruth is dropping bombs. What helped you learn? See, right now, what I'm going to do, I think I can copy and paste these because I'm all about hacking. So I'm just going to copy and paste these in here. Um, oh, look, the list is growing, guys. Awesome. So you can have a read of those. I won't go through all of them now. Um, and what I've done here is actually attached a few media release um, forms as well too, which might help you put yours together. This is a great um, list. I've got a list of some nonprofit taglines um, that you can go to as well. Uh, and then some power words, which are also used in sales a little bit, but you can have a look at those. So I encourage you to just build a little bit of a, a cheat, cheat sheet for yourself. Um, what have we got next? Okay. Um, has anyone heard of a swipe file before? Might be a bit of a, an old school term, but I think it's, um, it's, it's used by advertising and sales people. Uh, next, next hacking um, part of today is, is building a swipe file. And this is where... Um, you become a bit of a story hoarder or like me, you might um, collect, you know, direct mail um, or collect emails. Um, and really everything that you're doing uh, as a marketer, as a storyteller is a remix. So I encourage you, you know, you're not, we're not supposed to steal. Uh, we're not supposed to um you know, breach copyright laws and things like that. But just start building that collection um, of things. And I, I really like, this is from a book called Steal Like an Artist. Um, and, you know, a good way of stealing um, is when you steal from many. A uh, bad form of stealing is where you just steal from one and copy and paste and, you know, you're done. Um, so building a swipe file. 
I've got some great tips here on building that collection of, um, you know, things that you come across, you know, sign up. Um, so there's some tips here from, uh, I've got some tips here, some little links so you can go off to um, for building a swipe file. Um, but you can use Gmail um, to build this swipe file. Um, so what you what you can do is create a separate Gmail account um, and then sign up to a whole lot of charities and even political campaigns and you'll start to fill up your inbox with all different stories, all different types of emails. And then what you can do in Gmail is, is label each charity and then um, create tags. So it might be uh, you might create a tag for, um, you know, an urgency tag uh, or um, it's a Christmas appeal or it's a tax time appeal or this is a sign-up email for a, an event or something like that. So what you can start to build is um, a go-to Gmail swipe file that follows you everywhere you go and you can just go in, look at tags for, okay, I want to write this type of email and then you've got a selection. You've got all your subject lines there. Um, something that I've been working on, which is a bit of an alternative, is a Google spreadsheet. Um, you know, you can get a Google Drive for free, um, create a spreadsheet. And what I've done for you today is I have, let's see if I can share this. I've built one for you, a little bit of a template. Bear with me. There it is. So in um, in Google Sheets, you can create a spreadsheet. You can put in a bit of a description. You can put the subject line. What's the purpose of or idea that you really liked? And then you can upload um, a PDF of that email to your Google Drive. And then what you can do is separate it out by different charities. And up the top, you can make a little menu and you can actually link it um, link it to different parts of your spreadsheet. So that's for free today. Um, I'll give you a, a link to that as well. Hopefully that will help. Uh, share my other screen. There we go. So that's how you can build a little bit of a, um, a swipe file, I guess, in a Google spreadsheet. Um, and another little useful thing you can add to Google Chrome is called Go Full Page. I've got it here on my uh, Google Chrome. So what that actually does, it just does a full um, screenshot of your whole website, um, which you can then download. So there's a few tips on creating a swipe file there. Does anyone do this without knowing? They didn't know what it was called. Does anyone sort of put together a little collection or hoard stuff already? Throw it in the chat. <laughs> Mel says, yep, didn't know it was called that. Neither did I until recently. <laughs> um, yeah, people are saying that it's not as organized. Um, yeah, I hear you. I've only started doing this recently. Um, but it's. I think it's time spent in preparing something like this, I think, um, will save you time down the track for sure. All right, this is probably uh, my next exciting hack for today. I've only started to discover it recently, um, but there's this thing called um, artificial intelligence. And to begin with, it might make you feel like, oh, we're going to be done away with the job. Um, but there's some really useful AI tools um, for your copywriting. Um, I found this one just recently. It's called um, WordTune. And I'll just share this with you guys now as an example. Share screen. So this is called WordTune. I've just copied and pasted something in from Red Cross. Uh, and what you do is you just select a sentence and go rewrite. And what it'll do, it'll give you different versions of that sentence you've just written. And often when we're um, copywriting, um, we're just throwing things in as it comes from our brain. 
um, and it just might not be worded the right way. Um, so that's a really useful tool. Um, I think you get about 15 rewrites a day on their free account, which is really, you know, pretty useful, I think, for the average person person's day. So that one's called WordTune. Um, and in, uh, in the expanded versions, you've got a few different um, added extras there. So that's called WordTune. So here's an, uh, sorry, I've got to stop sharing. Stop sharing that. And I'll share this one. Yeah, so here's just a little example of a little blurb that I wrote and different ways to do it. So you still actually have to use your brain um, to figure out what the best version is. Um, here's some other um, paid versions of a similar uh, kind of tool. This one's called Peptype, and you can get it for $49 US. It's, the deal is actually ending this Friday. I've got a link for you there. Um, so, uh, so you can buy it for $49 um, for life and you can use it. And what it can do is it can help you create um, headlines, um, ad copy, social media posts. You might write something and then just need a conclusion. It'll put that together for you. Um, and these, these tools actually have, um, maybe you've just written a little sentence and you want, you want to flesh it out and add a bit more to it. Um, you can highlight it and expand it. Um, and what these AI tools do too is that you might just put in um, the topic and just put in a few little um, dot points. And what it'll actually do is I think it goes to the internet and it collects information on that topic and it throws it together. You still need to use your brain um, and actually see if that information is correct or sometimes the way it'll write it, it might be a bit clunky or... Um, a bit salesy, etc. There's another very similar tool called Writer. Um, and again, it's got a lifetime deal of $39. It's very similar. And you can um, do, do a trial, run a free trial of these two tools as well. And, you know, just choose the one that's um, that you like the most. Um, but you can also like look at the tone, etc. Of, of how you're trying to write. So there super useful, um, encourage you to have a play with those. Um, next up, I've just created um, a little bit of a menu. I think when it comes to storytelling, it's really useful to, you know, as I said, you don't want just big chunks of text. You want to try and mix things up um, in your story to uh, make it more engaging. And so I guess this is just a little bit of a menu of things that you might um, want to do when you're telling a story. So a little bit of a checklist. So can you put some stories in there? Um, like I said, can you can you get a story with a, people holding a, uh, a sign? And maybe you've actually got a video as well. I think something that we might forget to do is there might actually be some really good still shots in your videos as well that you can, that's a little hack for you today is um, there might be some really great little still shots in videos that you already have that you might be able to repurpose. Um, can you can you go live um, with your story? Can you do some behind the scenes photography? Um, I think it's it might be becoming a bit more common, especially during COVID, um, that we might not be able to get photos of um, case studies, but charities are starting to use illustration. And I think, um, Probably your child protection charities use that a little bit as well. So can you use illustrations or some clip art? Um, can you make an inf infographic out of um, a story that you're telling? Uh, so video, again, can you do a video of your case study? Can you put together a slideshow of five photos? Can you get a video from different perspectives, from the CEO, from the employer, from a volunteer? And then for people to, you want people to engage in your story as well. Um, and you might be able to do that, you know, with an Instagram poll or uh, if it comes to direct mail, can can you have a little lift where people can write a message of support? 
Um, quizzes are really popular now. Can you get people engaging with the story of your organisation through a quiz, um, test your knowledge, etc.? Um, or even, you know, you want that cross-pollination. Um, you want people that receive and are active in your emails. Do you want them um, interacting with your social media content. So can you put that link um, in your email, you, you know, please post or um, write a comment of support to Jill on this photo. Um, can you repurpose that story and put it as a blog post? Can you make it a press release? And as, as I said, this is a menu. You don't feel like you have to do all of this, um, but you might just want to mix things up a little bit. Um, social sharing, can you share tile, uh, create some tiles that people can share? Um, dollar handles or stats and interesting facts. And then just a few little ways that you might um, want to amplify that story a little bit further. Can you make your appeal into a Facebook event? Because you know, if it's an awareness day, people just love to hit, yeah, I'm going to that. And that's just how you can start to reach out. Can you um, get your ambassadors or your influencers to share or your corporate partners? You might have your own tips there. Um, feel free to add some um, in, the, in the chat if you've got any. This is the fun part. I think we're almost at the end um, and we can throw it to you guys. But I've got just a list of tools that I've curated for. I've done a bit of research. So um, copywriting tools. So there's WordTune that I mentioned. Jarvis, I think, is the most popular um, AI copywriting tool at the moment. As you can see, it's $29 a month, though. So some different options are there with PepperType and Writer. So I'd jump on today, try and score those deals. And then Grammarly is really useful as well. I think I, before I send most things, I, I um, chuck it in Grammarly just to check my grammar. Um, I've got a, a few things here, a few tools for forms, I think, in... Um, COVID world, it's hard to get paperwork to people if you're trying to put together a story or a case study and you just need to, to sign a form. It can be so annoying, um, annoying for them to try and get it back to you and how do I scan it to you or do I take a photo of it, etc. cetera. Um, you can actually get some tools to upload your form, make it really easy that they can even just sign it with their finger and I think the best one I've found is JotForm. That's my top pick. And you can get 100 submissions per month on a form um, for a free account. So that's probably the go-to there. There's a few other options there as well. And I've just put in here um, an engagement quiz uh, tool called Outgrow. Uh, and that costs $14 a month um, to use. In terms of graphic design, maybe you don't have Adobe or have the skills to use that. Canva, Canva is amazing. And I encourage you to keep checking back in Canva because they keep adding more tools. I think you can now do slideshow presentations. You can edit videos. You can make animated GIFs. Um, and it's free for nonprofits to apply to get their pro account. So jump on that. Um, videos and slideshows, I've found a whole lot of tools here. There's probably a whole lot more. Uh, yes, Ruth, it's free. Uh, no free steak knives, though. I've got a few video um, tools here. There's even a film school that you could do for $600, another free video course. Um, Animoto is quite good for creating video slideshows. Um, you can make them free, but they add a little um, watermark on them. Capwing, I found recently, is quite good, and that might be my top pick for the day. Um, stock photos and illustrations, I won't go through all of them because there's tons of them here. Some require attribution, some don't. Um, and there's even just free illustrations and things that you can find. Um, so it's, it's useful to have those to go to. Yeah, there's even one that does little animations of the elements, which is quite cool. Um, when you're creating videos, um, you, you need to put in, you know, like a backing track or some music. Um, you just can't, you know, add in your favourite 
song because that'll get pulled by YouTube for copyright. So you've got to find some um, free licensed um, audio. So there's uh, YouTube has a library which you can use, and then Audio Jungle has some cheap audio tracks from a dollar. Um, just some free uh, phone apps, I guess, for video editing. Um, InShot, CapCut, and ClipChamp. Uh, Clip um, probably my top pick if you do want to spend, uh, I think you can get some freebies, some freebie features in InShot um, that are pretty good. Um, so that's my top pick of the day. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail for equipment to doing storytelling too much, um, but you've got a lot already in the power of your hands with the smartphone. They're quite amazing. I think if you're wanting to do some video, though, with um, with your smartphone, it's really worth investing in something called uh, Osmo uh, DJI Osmo Gimbal. Um, so what that does is it helps you become shake free so when you're um filming something it will just smooth things out and they're only maybe about 180 dollars but they're quite amazing just to make some really smooth videos um gopros are fun um you know for taking some action shots or getting out and about um dear dslr camera don't laugh at me here but a selfie stick can be really useful um, for taking some shots of groups, etc., and then a ring light. I think that's to the end, and this is where I've chucked in all the other stuff that I couldn't cram in today for some useful resources and articles, research. Um, but does anyone have any hot tips that they'd like to share with us? I'm not sure if I can actually get you to talk in the system, um, but feel free to pop anything in the chat. Any questions that you've got? What are your struggles when it comes to storytelling that we can solve in 11 minutes? Oh, what's Pixar in a box, Ruth? I'm going to Google that. Ooh, Pixar in a box. This looks fun. Check that out. Okay. Mel's got a question. Getting corporate, uh, corporate clients to understand the value of storytelling over bland corporate jargon. Can anyone here help Melanie with her conundrum? How do you get corporate clients to understand the value of storytelling over bland corporate jargon? I think probably um, where I'd go, Mel, is is taking um, taking maybe that corporate client through some workshops on discovering who their clients are, um, what their pains are, um, you know, developing those those personas, and do they really do they want to um, do they want to read jargon? Really tough. Maybe that's a topic for our next session. Um, Melanie actually runs some great webinars as well, so check hers out. Um, Justine Simmons, do you have a personal favourite piece of storytelling you could share? Oh, that's a tough one. Throw this one to the group as well. Uh, I think recently um, Macmillan, Macmillan in the UK, um, have done a video uh, of patients and you know hospital workers, uh, and it's just it just has little snippets of like it, it takes you on an emotional roller coaster of um, of tragedy and of of triumph. Um, I wonder if I can quickly find it. Might not be able to. But if you check out Macmillan in the UK, they they take you on a bit of an emotional roller coaster. Dr. Ruth Knight, my interest at the moment is how to tell stories with and about data. Yeah, 
let us know when you've solved that one, Ruth. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I think, like I said, it, that that quote says, you know, people don't make decisions because of numbers. I don't think it it means you eradicate numbers at all. Um, but yeah, it's telling that story. I love a good data story, Ruth. Yeah, awesome. Well, I think um, if anyone else has any questions, um, let me know. I might I might send through. I'll copy that little link that um, Ruth shared with us. And I'll try and find that um, McMillan YouTube clip as well and send that around. Um, yes, guys, I'm going to send that. I'm going to bundle up that document for you and send that as soon as I can. And uh, hopefully it's really handy. Um, feel free to reply and send through uh, any of your tips and tricks too, um, yeah, that I can share with the group. Um, but, yeah, I hope that was useful today. Um, stay tuned for our next um, event that's coming up. Um, and let's keep the conversation going. I think there's lots to do with storytelling and uh, continually learning. Let's all become hoarders of stories, um, build those swipe files, um, share information with each other. Um, hope today was useful and uh, hope to see you at the next event and have an awesome day and an awesome week. Thanks, guys.